Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. You know, I'm constantly asked when I'm stopped on the street by people that I meet two major questions. The first question is, Kurt, how do you keep your hair so gosh darn silky and manageable? And the second question is, Kurt, how do you set up a King of the Hill tournament? Well, we're going to delay the answer to that first question for just a few minutes and get down to how I set up a King of the Hill tournament. And I'm going to do it by actually setting up a King of the Hill tournament that we're going to start in just a few weeks. Um, if you have been... Uh, a frequent visitor to my channel, you've noticed that I bought the Stratomatic Diamond Gems 1950s set and um, having a good time with that. <clears throat> There's eight teams in the set, but you know me, I just wanted something a little different. So <clears throat> we're going to do a King of the Hill tournament with the eight teams from the Diamond Gems set for the 1950s, and then I bought one more team to make it nine. Um, now, in a King of the Hill tournament, it doesn't matter how many teams you have. Uh, there are some important questions to consider when you're setting up your tournament. I'm going to go through those, and we're going to do the selection process to get the order of the teams. Now, I do the order of the teams randomly. You might seed the teams, or you might reverse seed the teams and actually make your worst team the first king of the hill. There's a lot, there isn't a wrong way to do it, um, but I really like the thought of the reverse seeding because it gives those teams on the bottom a chance to, or that you rank on the bottom a chance to accumulate some wins uh, before they roll into the tough part of the schedule. But today we're doing this one randomly. So we have nine teams. <clears throat> the teams are the 1950 New York Yankees, the 1950 Philadelphia Phillies, the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers, the 54 Cleveland Indians, the 54 New York Giants, the 56 New York Yankees, the 57 Milwaukee Braves, um, and the 59 Chicago White Sox. And then I added one team that's one of my favorites, and that's the 1956 Cincinnati Reds. So we have nine teams. Now, those teams are all in this box. And what we're going to do is to draw them randomly. And then we're going to put them on the King of the Hill listing here. So the first team that we draw is actually going to go in space number nine. And we're going to gradually work our way up. The second, the team that's second from the last becomes the visiting team for our first game. And the last team that we draw will be the first King of the Hill. They get home field advantage for the very first game. Now, the way that I've decided to do this is to have five wins be the total that you need to get to to make the World Series. And because it's a short uh, King of the Hill tournament, five wins is, is as short as I'd want to go. The World Series is going to be one game. <clears throat> so, the first team to five wins gets home field advantage for the World Series. The second team to five wins gets to be the visiting team for the World Series. And then we do the World Series. Now, because it's a King of the Hill format, we don't really know how many games it's going to take. But if you have nine teams and you have five wins to get there, I'm thinking we'll be somewhere between 35 and 45 games overall total to get our two five-win teams. Could be wrong. 
could happen very quickly. Uh, you know, King of the Hill, I have found, is about pitching. Your pitching has to be good enough to put together a streak against the best teams, in this case, in the 1950s. And if you don't have good enough pitching to do that, you can't put a streak together and you're going to go maybe two wins and get beat, two wins and get beat, stuff like that. All right, so we're going to go over the organizational questions at the end. But the first thing we're going to do now is do the drawing and get our rank in order. So let's take a look at that. All of my teams are in this box. I'm going to mix them up here so that I don't know what I'm drawing. And then I can just blindly put my hand in there and pull, pull them out one by one. As I indicated, our first team to pull is going to go in the number nine spot so that we have some drama going up to our first King of the Hill. All right, so let's do our first team, and that will be the 1950 New York Yankees. So they will be the last team to play their first game. They'll do the... They'll be the visiting team uh, for game number eight, actually. All right, next up in our tournament, team number eight will be the 1959 White Sox. Next up, team number seven, the 1953 Dodgers. Okay, next up, team number six. Let's pull these guys. The 1957 Braves. All right, team number five. Let's see who we got here. We're going to go right here. And that will be the 1950 Phillies. Team number four will be the 1956 Yankees. I thought about dropping a Yankee team out, but then I thought, no, you know what? Let's let's just go with what Strat has with the addition of my one addition, of course. The 1954 Indians will be team number three. We have two teams left. It's the 54 Giants and the 56 Reds. The next team that I draw will be the visiting team for our first game. And that will be the 56 Reds. And that makes... Very little suspense. The 1954 New York Giants become our first King of the Hill. So, the Giants will host the Reds in our first King of the Hill game in this tournament. Now that brings me to the pitching matchups, and so let's talk about that for just a minute. All right, so what I have in front of you here are start the starting pitchers used most often by the 54 Giants. Now, um, people get confused about how I do pitching in the King of the Hills, so I want to explain this. Here's how I do it, and I would be interested to hear your thoughts and feedback, but... Each team gets to set its starting rotation in the order that makes the most sense for them. In this tournament, I'm going to go with a four-man rotation. Now, what that probably would look like is uh, either Magley or Antonelli I'm going to say, just for the sake of argument, we're going to make Antonelli the number one starter. 
Magley, the number two. Ruben Gomez, the third starter. And then there's a choice to make because we got two guys here that are logical fourth starters. One's a right-hander, one's a left-hander. So now I'm not... Let's look at the schedule here. If the Giants win their first game, if the Giants beat the Reds, then they're going to play the Indians. If they beat the Indians, they're going to play the Yankees. Starter one, starter two, starter three. And then starter four would go against the 50 Phillies. So what I will do, if, if the Giants win all these games for their fourth starter, I'm going to choose the guy that I think has the best chance against the 50 Phillies. These other three I'm going to go with because they're clearly the number. The th first three starters are right here. The fourth starter, I might go with a lefty or a righty, depending upon who I think will beat the Philly, have the best chance of beating the Phillies. That's probably going to be a right-handed pitcher. So, if, if the Giants get that far, I'll make the choice and then go with Jim Hearn. Once, once the rotation is set, it's locked. So, you... This would be the, the four, then, in the order. That's locked for the duration of the tournament. So, let's play this out and see what it looks like here for a minute. Suppose that Johnny Antonelli starts the first game against the Reds. His, opposing, uh, his opponent would be Brooks Lawrence the number one starter for the 56 Reds. So this will be our first game matchup. Now let's suppose that the Giants defeat the Reds and it's Sal Magley's turn. <clears throat> He's the number two starter. But the opponent, the opponent in their second game would be the 54 Indians. They get to start their number one starter. So, uh, without thinking about it real heavily here, let's say it's Bob Lemon. All right. So then the Giants play the Indians. Let's say the Giants win that game. Then Ruben Gomez, the third starter, is up. And he will go against... The 56 Yankees. But the 56 Yankees get to start whoever they want, and they're going to choose their number one guy, and that's Whitey Ford. So notice, the first time through, these Kings of the Hill are getting the aces of every staff. And then what I do is I just keep shuffling to the back. So... If this is my four-man rotation for the Giants, Antonelli pitches, he goes to the back. I know that Magley is next up. When he's done, he goes to the back, then Gomez is up, and so on. So I keep a four-man uh, rotation going in my deck for each team. Now, this, you could argue is an incredible thing because the aces get to start. But if you're going to be the king of the hill, my friends, you got to beat the best. And so this first time through, the aces are going to be going against you. And then as they go the second time through, their second game, whenever that turns out to be, the number two starter will go. And then for each of these teams. And then the third game, the third starter will go. Meanwhile, the king of the hill keeps rotating through uh, their sequence. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if that doesn't really make sense. But you can keep it organized very easily just by putting the number four guy to the back of the pile. And then your new guy, your next guy is up uh, at the top of your stack. Uh, for the next time, it's their turn to play. 
Why do I like this? Well, if you're going to be the king of the hill, you got to beat the best. And sometimes that means you're not going to have your best on the mound. Your number two guy sometimes has to beat the ace, just like in real life. Your number three guy sometimes has to beat the number two guy, just like in real life. So I like it because it's not one versus one all the time and two versus two all the time. Hope that makes sense. All right, now let's talk about some logistical parts of the King of the Hill tournament that you need to think of before you begin. All right, in the left column, I have our rank order. So the 54 Giants are the very first King of the Hill. And then we just keep track of wins. All The only thing that matters is wins, not winning percentage. You get to five wins, you're in the World Series. You're the second team to five wins, you're the visiting team in the World Series, and so on. All right, so what do you need to think about for logistics? First, how many games are you? do you want to play? How many games do you want to have the victor qualify for the World Series? In this case, for this King of the Hill tournament, I chose five. I've chosen as many as ten just depends upon how many times you want to play, how many games you want to play. Nobody really knows how many games it's going to be because we don't know how close, to, if they all get to four wins, you know, before the first team gets to five, that's going to be a long series, it's going to be a long tournament. But I don't think that's going to happen. Then, how many games is the World Series going to be? Well, I answered that question with a one-game World Series. Do you want a DH? My answer to that question in this tournament was no, but I've certainly used them in other King of the Hill tournaments, as you probably know. Are you going to play injuries? I'm saying no, uh, but you could, and that would add an interesting dynamic to it. Are you going to rest players? Stratomatic has a resting system. Many Sims do. I'm not going to do that, although I will probably platoon pretty heavily with several of these teams. Uh, so the lineups might be different. And speaking of lineups, the last question, which batting orders are you going to use? I'm going to use the batting orders that I think are going to make the most sense for the team to win. Now, for many of these teams, Stratomatic, well, actually, for all of them, Stratomatic provides sample uh, batting orders. But I may not follow those. I may follow them. I may not follow them. I may go to baseball reference. I may do a lot of different things, uh, especially if a team is struggling, might try and shake things up a little bit. But these are the logistical questions that you need to think about as far as uh, being organized before you start your tournament. And then you're ready to roll. If you've answered these questions and you've got your order of teams, you're ready. The 54 Giants will host the 56 Reds in our first game in this tournament. I hope you'll join me. Let me know if you have questions or comments in the space below. And don't forget, you can always check out channel membership on the member side of the channel. We do a lot of stuff with King of the Hill as well. Uh, that link is in the description for this video. Have a great evening. I hope this has been helpful to you. And look out for the 56 Reds at the 54 Giants coming to my channel very soon uh, with Stratomatic. Have a great evening. So long, everybody.